Hello, and welcome to another episode of Pim Ponders About Stuff. The former filler show that has kind of grown into its own regular series, because I cannot be bothered to make proper video essays and I need to pet my channel out somehow. Today I want to talk about occupational safety and health measures, and why no one fucking follows them. Originally I had planned this video out to be completely different. I wanted to make a full-blown video essay in which I talked about work safety and the rules and also why people did not follow them. I had sketches planned, 3D animations, the whole shebang. However, it was when I began to research the subject when I realized this is really dry and boring. As it turns out, I had fallen victim to that dreaded demon, the feature creep. You can't have all of your eggs in one basket, so I decided to split up my original idea in several videos. This video will explain the pondering part, aka why people don't follow proper safety rules and procedures. I think now is also a good time to explain what gave me the idea for this video in the first place, as to provide some context to why I'm relegating myself to being a rules lawyer. So last September I started following a work slash study course for becoming a fire safety system inspector. I have been unemployed for quite some time now and I've been trying to get back doing something better with my life for a few years. This course was the ideal opportunity since it allows me to do something useful for a change. Hey, Pim from the future here. As I'm writing this script right now, is my future regarding this job non-existent? There are a whole lot of reasons for that, which are quite frankly too personal to get into right now. But uh, needless to say, I will not be returning into that course. So you know, another job thwarted by my disability. Thanks society, I really needed another fucking kick in the face. Part of this course includes something called a VCA training. VCA is a Dutch certificate given to both employees and companies to show that they work via a certain method of occupational safety and health. As it turns out, are our OSHA requirements only loosely regulated via a law framework called the ArboWet? Because you know... Letting private companies and institutes do their thing is a great way of improving quality and safety. Anyway, I needed to get a VCA certificate, which I have now, because in my job I would most likely get into areas where dangerous work is done. Think about things like heavy industry and construction. During this course, the instructor often lamented how even certified companies often did not really follow the rules. According to him, only about 20% of VCA certified companies would actually follow the rules to the letter. Note, I tried doing some research about this number, but I could not really find anything regarding this or VCA compliance in general, so your mileage may vary. This got me thinking. Why do so few companies, even those that should, follow these rules, isn't a safe environment a more productive environment? So for this analysis I will be focusing mostly on the US and Europe, mostly because most of the research and info I could find was centered around these two regions of the world. Keep in mind that every country and sometimes even different regions have differing norms and standards, so what I'm talking about here might not be universal everywhere. To really understand this all, we need to talk about the history of OSHA measures. We can trace most of our safety measures and regulations back to that time period of human history that everyone on the left side of the political spectrum has had a um, complicated history with. The Industrial Revolution. While dangerous work of course already existed before this time period, it was never really done on such a grand scale before. The industrial revolution brought with it wage labor, modern capitalism and all of the fun stuff that comes with it. 
Working conditions were often abysmal. You'd think people have shit jobs now, and they definitely do, but in general, the chance of you getting demeted by some large industrial machine has gone down a bit over the years. People often worked long hours, doing dangerous jobs for very meager pay. The work they did was dirty, dangerous and, quite frankly, something that no one should ever be subjected to. Do you know the fun part? These kind of working conditions still exist in large portions of the world, especially in the global south that is being exploited by large western companies and the so-called People's Republic of China. So much for being a worker's paradise. Anyway. As a response to this, labor unions started being formed. These were collective unions of working peoples that demanded better working conditions. The history of unions across the globe is varied and complex and deserves more attention than I am capable of doing so. But needless to say that they were cracked down upon hard initially and throughout the 19th and early 20th centuries. Concessions were given eventually though, ranging from shorter work hours to better working conditions to social insurance legislation and workers' compensation laws, first introduced by fucking Bismarck of all people in 1884. Proper governmental mandated work safety legislation didn't really start until after World War II though. In 1956, the European Economic Community, kind of like a prototype EU, made a pan-European agreement in the Treaty of Rome to work towards unifying their safety norms across all member states. They took their sweet time working on this though, since the first comprehensive framework for this was not established till 1989, with Framework Directive 89-391-EEC. Before that, most national states had their own OSHA requirements one way or another. In the United States was a federal level OSHA regulation established in 1971 by the 1970s Occupational Health and Safety Act. Building up OSHA was slow and the first few years were spent building up norms and laws starting at a quote unquote worst case first basis. In 1980, OSHA's coverage was extended to cover all federal workers in the US. Nowadays is OSHA a full level federal agency people can report bad workplaces with shitty safety to. So we finally got work safety laws and protocols. Everyone is happy right? Wrong. Implementation of national level OSHA regulations has been met in general with mixed success. While it is true that we have fancy new laws and regulations now, in practice the implementation has been met with mediocre results and improvements. As it turns out is putting the responsibility of making sure that people don't fucking die in a workplace related accident in the hands of the bosses and CEOs that want to minimize expenses for maximum profit a pretty fucking shit idea. The only times when OSHA legislation has really been followed is when the state forced companies to adopt them and regularly inspected them, or when some accident happened that was too big to cover up. I can already hear some people breathing in my neck. But PIM, the market will regulate it. If a company has bad workplace ethos, then they will get infamous and not be able to sell their products. Stop complaining about capitalism, you bootleg bread tuber. If that is supposed to be true, then why weren't workplaces made safe until companies were literally forced by the state to do so? Why do large multinationals move all, the, all of the dangerous stuff to places where they can get away with unsafe working conditions and underpaying their workers to the point of starvation? With that said, you do bring up an interesting point, imaginary straw man in my head. Workplace ethos does play a role in this. While I do like to rag on about the systemic problems inherent in capitalism, I also think that it would be fair to look at this from a sociological perspective. Note, Pim is not a sociologist. 
Something I have often noticed throughout my life is how people often don't like change. Whenever something new is introduced, the uh, first reaction many people have is one of distrust and annoyance. I think that is also extends to workplaces. Most people working dangerous jobs have their own methods for doing so. Either because it is the how they learn doing it or because it is a comfortable way of working for them. If suddenly some new regulation comes through that changes up this way of working, then people in general are not going to like that. It always worked fine before, so why change it? Don't fix what ain't broke. While this might be fine in the eyes of your average construction worker for example, it does not always mean that it is smart or better. During my work slash study course, I encountered an older man who used to work in construction and engineering for years. And he said to me that back in the 80s and 90s, he always saw at least one person fall to their death at every place he worked at. Not exactly a good working environment. Another issue is, like I mentioned before, implementation. Implementing new safety regulations is a costly affair and is often solely in the hands of managers who have no clue on how to implement it properly. So it often gets done on the cheap or done in a way that makes it barely qualified for certification. Unless you have a standard inspector come around on a regular basis, which is usually what happens over here, Companies cannot really be trusted to implement safety rules accordingly and done the way they should be. Even during inspections, it is more likely to be a facade than anything else. I remember how of my former job, how we often had to wear polos with the company logo on it whenever safety inspectors came around and had to look busy. And during some practical lessons of my work slash study course, some aspects of fire safety systems that were technically not up to spec were hand wave away under the excuse of implementing that properly would be too, too expensive and this works. These are cases even in countries where they actually bother to check companies for following safety procedures. In some countries this isn't even really the case. Many large multinationals often set up shop in countries that we would consider quote unquote less developed. This is a laden term with a lot of shitty implications, but stay with me here. These countries often have governments that are more than willing to look away whenever a large western company gives them some, well, bonuses. Doing this allows said company to run their plants and other facilities in a way that would make a 19th century rich industrialist proud. Accidents often happen here and are swooped under the rock to prevent outrage. This is why everyone knows about Chernobyl and no one knows about the Bhopal disaster, which for the record killed the most people in an industrial accident in history. This is also important for workplace ethos since the company very much determines what said ethos would be. Income level is also important for this. Many so called blue collar jobs are often done at a low income and it is difficult nowadays for most people to get a job. You don't want to be the one to get fired and risk starving to death when you complain about unsafe workplaces. This is only compounded in poor countries where the extremely low income of one person is often needed to feed multiple people. So people put up with the danger, the long hours and the underpay because the alternative is literal death. So besides the physical threats of death cheapening on implementation and semi-sociological aspect of don't fix what ain't broke, a school of thought that is obviously encouraged by large companies, is there any other aspect of this? I should probably preface this part with the fact that I am not really a Marxist. I think Marxism is a decent tool for class analysis and explaining why capitalism is kind of crap, but I don't think his word is as holy gospel as some people like to do. This also means that I actually get to flex my crap German. Lasst uns beginnen! Anyway, Karl Marx over here had an interesting theory of why in a capitalist society everyone feels like crap. 
He called this the social alienation or entfremdung in German of people from aspects of their human nature or Gattungswesen. Ha! Eat that communism goes against human nature arguments. The basis of this theory is that in a capitalist mode of production like ours, the worker loses the ability to determine their own lives and destiny and are deprived of the right to think of themselves as directors of their own actors. If you really think about this, is this very true? We have really very little control over our own lives. Most of us are forced to work a job we most likely don't like, because else we risk dying in a ditch somewhere. Even those with jobs they like, we more likely than not have very little control of that job. We most likely have bosses that tell us what to do and what direction the company is taking, while we just have to shut up and fill in that spreadsheet. Marx identified several types of alienation, but the one that's relevant for us is the alienation from the act of production. According to him, the generation of products, that is to say goods and services, is done via an endless sequence of repetitive motions and actions that offer the worker little to no psychological satisfaction for a job well done. The worker produces the same stuff over and over again and only receives a meager compensation for his work, since whatever the worker produces is always going to be worth more than what they are paid for. This goes for both design and creation of products, by the way. Because the worker receives so little satisfaction from their work, they tend to view work as something that needs to be done, but something they don't like doing. As a result, they tend to get a carefree attitude regarding most things work related. As you can imagine, actively disliking or hating your workplace does not do a whole lot for work safety. Another interesting aspect of this theory to look at is the term Gattungswesen or species essence. A company will tell you to separate your personal life from your work, but that is something that according to Marx is not that simple. Marx described species essence as an intrinsic human mental essence that is characterized by a desire to engage in many activities that promote mutual human survival and psychological well-being by means of emotional connections with other people. In layman's terms, human feels bad because human is forced to compete with other humans instead of working together with other humans. Historically speaking, has the driving factor for human success always been our ability to work together really well? If you suddenly force us to compete with each other, you will cause some psychological damage on a giant scale. This competition also makes it so you want to cut corners on things like safety and health issues. After all, if you're forced to compete just to survive, then you cannot waste precious time and resources into something like safety. Shit's fucked, yo! No, but for real. Unsafe work practices and poor occupational safety and health are a feature of capitalism, not its failings. I know that bashing capitalism is old hat at this point, but it really is an important factor in how it ruins our lives. With that said, we can do better. If we remove the profit motive from our lives and replace the capitalist system with a system based on mutual aid, then the subject of work safety becomes more prevalent anyway. A place where people can work together on a project without needing to compete with each other but rather pulling their own resources and talents is one where there is room for good work safety. Until such a place comes, please do be careful in your job, read the manuals and regulations and don't put yourself into unnecessary danger. And always remember, you can leave. If a situation feels unsafe, drop whatever you're doing and leave. You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one. Hey everyone, thank you for watching the video. This was, um, yeah, this video took way more time to make than I had originally intended to. I have been going through a lot of stuff regarding work, which I also explained in the video. So as a result, this video kind of went on the back burner for a while. I am still glad I made the video and I like the overall tone of the script. It's sufficiently angry enough, which vibes with me quite well, honestly. 
Um, as for the future, um, it's difficult to tell. I do have this idea of trying to make like parody PSA videos with a left-wing slant to them, but um, I still need to think about that. See how that goes. Um, well, is there anything else? My next video will be, quite frankly, I don't know. I don't. I, I never really plan ahead that far, and um, yeah. It's kind of difficult to tell how long it will take for me to, um, you know, do stuff. Um, I do realize, and this is for the people that talk to me on Discord, I do realize that I have been a bit, how do I say this nicely, erratic lately. I do apologize for that. Um, I have not been feeling great. I mean, not awful, but not great either, and it sometimes shines true on the way I talk and the way I communicate. I cannot really help that s sometimes, I cannot really help how I feel. Either way, uh, thank you again, thanks for watching the videos, and I will see you all next time.